Hey there, so today we have another review. This is a beer from Cigar City. This is Maduro. Crazy enough, I've been here for this long and I've never had it, or I've never reviewed it. Or I've had this beer before. Not the freshest. This was canned about five months ago. I think it took about a month ago. So I think it's a brown ale. Um, this actually updated on the BJCP to be a English brown ale before it was listed as American brown ale. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's take it to this guy. Uh, 5.5%. Um, there's a little bit of flaked oats in there, which is ooh, some English brown ale. It's not traditional, not traditional, not traditional, but uh, not a traditional ingredient. That doesn't really matter. Should I do, but it's still very delicious. Uh, beer comes in a mm, medium brown color. Yeah, definitely that's just solid brown, not too dark. Um, I don't know about the opacity. It is actually like you can maybe, I ah, no, no, it's not that op ah, no, it's carbonation, but you can barely see through it. That's dark enough for that. Uh, tan comes in really, uh, head comes in really nice, like tan color. So, on the nose, yeah, I mean, it smells like brown ale. Um, it leans on chocolate, but like not roasty all the way. Like, it's like, I get like, hmm, let's, let, let, let's, let's dig in some of my notes before I get to theirs. Um, you get some like light kind of like, uh, like a chocolate coating. What do you call it? Like, um, chocolate, uh, dusting, like dusting chocolate. Um, not too intense, just like a light dusting. Um, so sort of like a, like on desserts that don't have chocolate, but dusting still has that like light-ish kind of chocolate flavor. Um, again, like a little bit of like vanilla and like almost like um, hazelnuts, for sure nuts. That's what I'm getting. It, it, the flavor reminds me of like um of a uh, like 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 some desserty but like nutty. So again, um, you get like Twix, like the, the, that that combination of cracker caramel and like chocolate flavor. Toasted hazelnuts, um, but it really actually smells a bit Halloween, and we just had Halloween recently, so like it has this kind of like nutty Halloween candy kind of thing. Um, maybe not peanuts, but a little bit more intense, right? A little bit more intense than simply um, uh, peanut M&M. &M. Mm, a little nice temple on this guy. Mm, wow, this guy is shower. This is me. This is only five point five percent. And wow, the way the malt flavor are quite tense. Um, it's obviously from uh, malt complexity and malt flavor and the their great uh, recipe development versus something like Doppelbach, which has this really nice kind of like complex malt flavor, but that's like fire reaction and um, decoction mash. And maybe some I mean, not, not from de decoction mash, but maybe, maybe just from the complexities of uh, Munich malt, right? And their ability to like, Build so much malt flavor just out of um, ideally a couple malts, right? Here I suspect it's a lot of malts, right? Um, and I'm suspecting at least four to five ingredients, at least uh, malt base wise. Um, I'm tasting this kind of like really nice range of kind of like, ooh, wow, it goes all over the place. Like toasted bread crust, um, toasted bread crust with peanut butter, with maybe a little bit chocolatey. So you get Nutella, and I also get like Ferrero Rocher with that kind of nuttiness. And like wafer, uh, wafer, multi, uh, wafer malt flavor. So it's like light, medium, a little bit darker. Uh, get a little bit of cocoa on the back end. We also get a little bit of like light roast coffee. So you get like hazelnut roasted coffee. Wow. Um, this all shows without being overly, um, what's more like heavy on the palate. This is me. And then, um, yeah, without being overly heavy on the palate, at least like, um, they call it dry-ish, so without uh, too much residual sweetness. But then also the ability to have the malt depth while being like not too intense on, on, on not only uh, malt flavor, like not overly roasty, but also the, the attenuation. So again, it really sings like this kind of like um, American slash bootleg or English inspired way to make brown beer that is complex. And I'm, again, I'm still thinking of like um, it's mostly double buck, right? Mm. Mm. And then you get a little bit of raisin in there too, like dehydrated raisin, not very sweet. Um, yeah, that's a beer. Oh, it's most semi uh, semi sweet chocolate toffee, uh, hints of fresh coffee. Yeah, uh, Mulford. I mean, how to flavor the size has for. 5.5 is unbelievable. I mean, like, the fact I didn't review this for you guys earlier is absolutely insane. Like, mm. yeah, 
add the hint of dark fruit and the layers and malt flavor. The hint of that roast that doesn't push too far is just there to like cut if the beer add complexity without really quite making a coffee beer. So you're still in that brown range where it's like you're in the realm realm of like Starbucks kind of coffee, right? Where like probably like a little bit more coffee than that, but like where it's like sweetened and fatted and like you know it's not that bitter. And also has this kind of cold brew kind of thing, right? Where where you're sort of like dampening down these intense roast notes. Like it's, it's all these notes are there, and the, the roasty notes are there, but they hid and like tamped down, just like just like nice and tight, where it's like cut off all the edges. Nothing's bitter and intense here. Um, for me, this is actually a beer that like I have issues with because like it really does sort of look and taste like English porter, like at times. But yeah, not, it's just it's on the edge of tasting like um. English border. It's like right there. So um, that's a fun one. Um, I would think it's definitely in general. I mean, there aren't too many English examples that come here, but they're definitely way more complex and dense um, than most versions of English brown ale. So actually, mm. I'm questionable that it should be on BJCP because it really is like a whacked out version. Like, <laughs> like nothing on the, on the uh, BJC, BJCP would actually taste like this. Um, it's like an exaggeration of what the style is. So. And again, for me, it really tastes more like American Brown Ale or slings to towards like something like just run under English Porter, which is not really a style like English Porter minus. Then again, I think the style uh, guidelines allow for like a beer like this with its uh, kind of roast quality. So um, for me, it tastes more like that. So until next time, guys, cheers. I'm curious what the guys think. Actually, maybe I'll message them. But uh, for me, this is absolutely insane. Like, oof. And the, the fun thing, they definitely use English yeast here. So there's this, um, let's talk about like raisin fruit, I guess. There's definitely like a um, like a fruit skin kind of thing, like, you know, adult kind of uh, fruit roll-ups. Um, fruit skin, kind of like stewed apple-y, kind of apple ester that sort of shows up. It's like a red apple thing that's like very um, uh, intense, like ethyl, ethyl hexanoate. Yeah. Um, it's a very specific note to English yeast, so it really does feel British. It's really fun. Uh, that's a crazy beer rating. Um, I'm gonna give this guy a solid 96. I probably should revisit this guy. It is so, so, so good. Uh, world class it, at 5.5 at this kind of color of like, you know what, like brown. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna find many beers that beat this at all. 96 later.